weren't lying. Three minutes. All right. <laughs> right. And I was, I was waiting for four. <laughs> It might, it might have to be fairly quick today, but um, I've got my Bible right. here and I've got Enjoy Life Forever on this phone. Shall I read Chapter 7, um, just the bit on the Holy Spirit? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, if you want to cover, um, should we just start that lesson from the beginning, or what, what were you thinking? Uh, just... Um, uh, Le Lesson 7, Part 4, Holy Spirit, God's Active Force. Shall I just read that paragraph? Read that part. Okay. All right, no worries. Well, um, I mean, something that we like to do, um, in line with one of the verses in that section, Luke eleven thirteen, is we do like to um, say a little prayer um, before I'm, we do I'm, it you're quite willing, I'm, You're quite welcome to pray before this call. I've no yep. problem what you do in the privacy of your own house. OK, um, we might have to be a little bit quick, but let's, let's just go, go through this. Holy Spirit dash God's active force. Mm -hmm. Just as we use our hands to do work, Jehovah uses his Holy Spirit. The Bible reveals that Holy Spirit is not a person, but the force God uses to get things done. Read Luke 11:13 and Acts 2:17, and then discuss these questions. God will pour out his Holy Spirit on those who ask for it. So do you think Holy Spirit is a person or is it God's active force? Why do you say that? Hmm. Jehovah uses his Holy Spirit to accomplish amazing things. Read Psalm 33, 6 and 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 20 to 21. And then discuss this question. What are some ways in which Jehovah has used his Holy Spirit? Okay, so shall we read those verses then? So Luke eleven thirteen. Um, the the section doesn't really define what an active force is or what a person is, and I mean I'll read it if you want me to, but it's kind of unless you actually know what you're talking about and you define your terms, you can't actually even have a conversation. Okay, all right. Yeah. So. Um, so what, do, you, do you want to define one eye to find the other, or did you want to... Because this is what some people claim, is that some will say it's a, it's a person, and some will say it's an active force, so... Well, yeah. uh, unless you define what you mean by those terms, a, a conversation can't take place. If I said to you, the Holy Spirit is la, 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 and you said, no, Robert, no, the Holy Spirit is not la, 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 the Holy Spirit is he, 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 and if I just kept okay. saying la 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 to you and you said he 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 to me, we're not having a conversation. We're okay. just uttering sounds which neither understand. So, so when you so when you say that the Holy Spirit is a person, yeah. what do you mean by that then? Um, I would mean by that that the Holy Spirit is personal, not impersonal. Everything in the universe is either a he or a she, or or okay. that's personal or an it. So, I mean, uh, from my reading of your literature, the Father is a spirit and he's a person. You believe Jesus rose as a spirit creature. Now, I don't accept that. I think he rose in the same body he died in. But you say Jesus rose as a spirit creature, so he's a spirit and he's a person. The angels in heaven are each individual spirits and they're each individual persons. Satan and, and his demons, they're each individual spirits and they're individual persons. But then when you get to the Holy Spirit, you say the Holy Spirit is a spirit and he's not a person. And I find that a little inconsistent. To me, when I say person, what I mean is personal, not impersonal. Okay. So, but, but every single time that the, word, that the Bible uses the word spirit, it doesn't automatically mean that it's referring to a person or, or a he or a she. Well, uh, I'm at a place with free Wi-Fi. They, 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 they have a huge bar with spirits here. So that's an example of the word spirit, not meaning... Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not not, not yeah, meaning a person. True. Spirit is used in the sense of alcoholic spirits, like whiskey and gin. Um, the, the Holy Spirit, as I understand, would possess four aspects of personality. He can speak and say, me and I, which has a technical term, self-cognizance, you recognize your own existence. If I say to you, I am speaking to you now, I, when I say I, I'm recognizing my own existence, that's self-cognizance. Holy Spirit has self-cognizance, self-will, he forbids Paul to preach in Asia, Acts 16.6. 6. 
He has intellect because he has a mind. We read of the mind of the spirit in Romans 8, 27. And he has emotion. He can love, Romans 15, 30. He can be grieved, Isaiah 63, 10, and so on and so on. Um, so I would see these four aspects of what makes some, some, someone personal rather than impersonal okay. as being applicable to the Holy Spirit. What, what, what I don't mean is if I were to say the Holy Spirit is a person, or Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are three persons. What I don't mean is they're three people, like three separate human beings sitting in their own separate space on a sofa, as I've seen well, them pictured yeah. <laughs> in literature. Let's just rewind just a second, though, yep. because you, you were saying that the Spirit has to be a, per has to be a personal thing. It has to be something. It has to be a, a he or a she. But in the Bible, the word Spirit is not always used in that context. No, it's a, it's a neuter it's a neuter word. Numa is is, is, is neuter. But right. but then so, but then chair word, in right? French is feminine. Chair, I think in French is feminine. So, you so, know, that doesn't mean that a chair is a, a person or a human being. It's just right. the and, vagaries and of language. <laughs> Genesis eight verse one is just an example of this. Where in the original Hebrew that word numa would have been there. Where it says God caused a pneuma to blow over the earth. Now that's translated in all the translations that I can see as wind. So is wind a person? Is it not necessarily? Wind is just uh, something that you can experience. You know that the wind is blowing. You can mm -hmm. feel it, but it's not a person as, as such, is it? Um, I think it's, I, I mean, I'm not a Hebrew or, or a Greek scholar, but I think it would be Ruach in the Hebrew there. I don't know what the Greek Septuagint would read. Perhaps it is Numa. Oh, sorry. Yes, no, yes. absolutely. That's right. Hebrew's Ruach, Greek Numa. Sorry, yes. absolutely right. Yes, um, so in Genesis, it would have been Ruach. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what it would read there, yeah. is, as you say, Ruach. Um, another... Uh, but, but the thing is, we, we, we read in John 4.24 that God is spirit. God is spirit... Re re referring yes. to the Father, and they that worship yes. him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you take right. that argument and apply it to God the Father, then God the Father would be a wind. Yeah, I know. Y so you this, you so see... This, so this is the issue. So you can only... The reason why every translation has translated that as wind is because the context helps you to understand the yeah. meaning of it. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that there isn't a... Um, you can't apply a one rule to this one word, whether it's Ruach or Numa, that's the word in its original form. However, how we translate it into English is going to vary depending yeah. on the context. So yeah. you've got that word Ruach in um, Habakkuk 2.19. Um, in, in where? Habakkuk 2 and verse 19. Okay. And in the King James, it uses the word breath. Yes, but... Which is interesting, because in the American Standard... Oh, where is it? Which is the other one? Oh, the Byington uses the word soul. The American Standard uses the word breath. But then, um, but, but you see... You can you can go to the Bible. Words have a range of meaning. Even the word right, God exactly. in the Bible yeah. doesn't always mean God. Sometimes right. the word God is used of false gods, like, like so Satan so that, and his that, demons. That was my reasoning. So and, when and you were saying that the Holy Spirit must be a person because all these other spirits, the angels, uh, Jehovah, you know, God no, 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 that's is, that's. I, I wasn't explaining my position. I was explaining uh -huh. your position. I wasn't explaining what I believe there. I was explaining the fact that Jehovah's Witnesses say the Father is a spirit and he's a person. Mm -hmm. Jehovah's Witnesses say the Son is a spirit and he's a person. Jehovah's Witnesses say the individual angels, the individual demons and Satan are individual spirits and they're individual persons. But then you go to the Holy Spirit and you say the Holy Spirit is a spirit and he's not a person. That's not what I believe. That's what you believe. And yeah. words, yeah. and you you can go to the Bible and you can make words mean anything because words have a range of meaning. Sometimes the word God is applied to things that are not God, such as false gods, or even to judges. Um, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, even Je people are referred to as God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can, if you want to find a proof text, 
you can find a proof text to prove absolutely anything. The Mormons, the Christadelphians, um, the Seventh-day Adventists, they've all got long lists of proof texts to, to, to prove what they believe. And the way these proof texts work is if you want to um, deny that Jesus is a person, for instance, you go to a verse that says Jesus is the door, right? Doors are made of wood, so therefore Jesus isn't a human being. He's actually a plant. He's actually a tree. Because he says, I am the door. You see? Yeah, I, I mean, it's totally ridiculous, but you can prove anything from the Bible. And words simply pointing out that sometimes the word spirit is used of breath and wind. Yes, I know that. But at other times, it's used of spirit. So you have to look at the context to find, okay, well... Yeah. You, you know, what does that actually mean? You can't take any verse in isolation. Yeah. I mean, if the Holy Spirit is a non-person, then you would look for surrounding context verses to find if that is, if that is the case. Or if the, the, the Holy Spirit is personal, I would prefer to use the word personal to person. I mean, I'm happy to use either term. But when I say person... I don't mean the Holy Spirit is one of three people sitting on a sofa, and that's how I've seen Father, Son, and Holy Spirit um, um, visually represented in some Christian literature as three separate people sitting on a sofa. So when I say the word person, I don't mean that. I don't mean the Holy Spirit is a separate human being to the Father and to, to the Son. What I mean is he is personal because there are scriptures that talk about the Holy Spirit being self-cognizant, possessing self-will, having intellect, he has a mind, Romans 8.27, and he has emotion. Now that cannot be applied to the wind or to no. breath. No. So when you therefore look at the Holy Spirit in, in the context of the Holy Spirit, because he has self-cognizant, self-will, intellect and emotion, he would be a he, not an impersonal it. So... Did you want to look? Should we look at these two verses yes, mentioned here? Yes, yes, yes. Which, which, which verse then, first? So that one, Luke eleven thirteen, is mentioned first. Yep. Didn't mean to go on a bit, but <laughs> thank you no, for your patience. Yeah, do you want to read that one when you when yep. you've got it? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Okay. So. Um, with that verse in mind, you can take the context as, as you wish as well. This is Jesus, isn't it? Um, teaching. Um, what do you think this suggests about the Holy Spirit? Well, it says the Holy Spirit is given. Just as the Father also gives Jesus, um, John 3.16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. So the Father gives the Son in John 3.16, Luke 11. 13 the father gives the holy spirit it yeah. really doesn't prove anything if you if you try to argue that the word give means the holy spirit is impersonal because he's given yeah. therefore jesus would also be impersonal because he's he's given and i think yeah. i think it says somewhere in the bible that um god gave moses obviously the context is a leader to the children of israel so you know if god gives moses does that mean that moses cannot be a human being because he's given and you can't you could argue <laughs> because he makes a big comparison here to a gift doesn't he yeah. um, and you can reason that the, the ransom is a gift as well mm -hmm. um, so yeah if one wanted to argue that way they could they could argue that way yeah um, Acts 2 verse 17 yep sure do you want to read it um, yeah so you're doing it from the... I don't have a new King James. I've got a King James or an American standard. Um, either. E e either is fine. But just say which, which one you're going to be reading from. I'll do the American standard, though, yep. just because I don't like... The, the old language of the King James makes it a bit confusing. Um, and it shall be in the last days, uh, said, said God, I will pour forth of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall be visions, your old men shall dream dreams. So again, the con with that verse in mind, what does that suggest? Um, it uses an idiomatic phrase, pour out, of the Holy Spirit. 
and that's a, a, common, a common phrase in the Bible. It simply means um, giving for service, or giving yourself for service, or, um, um, or to help or to assist people. For instance, Jesus is said to be poured out, this is prophetic of course, in Psalm 22:14. Speaking of Jesus, it says of him, I am poured out like water. So if being poured out makes you impersonal, uh, it makes the Holy Spirit impersonal in Acts 2.17, then Jesus would be impersonal also in Psalm 22.14. And, and Paul is poured out, Philippians 2.17. I mean, there's lots of these sort of examples in the Bible. Um, Although the example no, here for being poured out in Paul's, Paul's case would be um, it's likened to being poured out like a drink offering. So mm -hmm. Paul is yeah. poured out, Philippians 2.17. Yeah, so Paul is poured out in Philippians 2.17. Jesus is poured out in Psalm 22.14. Easy to remember the Philippians passage because you quoted Acts 1.17. This is Philippians 2.17. 2, so that's how I kind of remember it. Yeah, yeah, that, that is a, a well-known verse, isn't it? It's a beautiful turn of phrase, actually, the way that he's willing to expend himself for others, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Isn't that bad? Uh, so then, uh, I, another way you can see, again, is, so, the, the way that we will study the Bible isn't, isn't by just taking one verse in isolation. We will find the subject, so, where that be kingdom, or in this case, Holy Spirit. You look up as many verses as you can mm -hmm. with that word in mind, and then you see what the overall picture is then telling you on this. Yeah. Um, but then rather than approaching it thinking, right, okay, this is a, a, a theory, and then reading isolated verses to fit your own theory, you want to read as many verses as you can that mention this term, and then think, okay, what's What's this generally giving me um, as an overview? Um, so, the other ones mentioned in this section are Psalm 33, verse 6. Doesn't that just say the Holy Spirit? Doesn't that just say the Holy Spirit is greater? If my memory serves me right. Uh, Yes, so it says, by the word of Jehovah, this American standard verse, by the word of Jehovah were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Well, surely that's simply saying that the, the word of God, um, probably prophetic of Christ, uh, and the breath of his mouth, a reference to the Holy Spirit, probably it's simply saying that the, the, the Son and the Holy Spirit are also active in the creation of the universe together with the Father. Um, I wouldn't really have too much to say about mm, oh, that verse. Because the, the word in here is not referred to as a title. So it's not, no. it doesn't look like it's referring to Jesus. It just refers to the word of Jehovah, as in like, you know what, your word or my word. Not, not the word. Because mm. um, generally it's in capitals that it's referring to the word, Jesus Christ. Um, but, so this is just referring to, as in... Jehovah says the word, mm -hmm. the word, and like, well, said it, he did it, kind of thing, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, Jesus is referred to in, as the word in John 1.1, 1, 1. and if I just go there briefly, it then goes on to say that all things were made through him, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, no, absolutely. No, no, I'm not, um, yeah, at, at that, but I'm just saying this verse, what it's teaching us about the spirit. I wasn't referring to Jesus at yeah. this moment. Well, um, uh, but yeah, you're right. Generally speaking, yeah, yeah, he, he played a crucial role in creation. There's no doubt about that. Because you see the, the scriptures in its entirety. Well, Psalm 33, 6 is talking about the creation of the heavens, the Genesis creation. Yeah. Uh, John 1, 3, all things were made through him. That's the word of John 1, 1. And without him, nothing was made that was made. So the word worked. Oh, it doesn't say yeah. um, the creation would have originated in the father but then being created through the sun. So... Um, oh, yes. There's no doubt he played a, a crucial role in it. Yeah, not arguing with that. I so, was just saying, this, what, this verse... Um, well, it's simply... By, the holy, by and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So it's just saying that Jehovah God is the one who made... Oh, what's your understanding with that name, by the way? Uh, 
I'm, I'm no problem. I, a Yahweh is more accurate, but I'm, I, I'm happy with either Jehovah or yeah. Yahweh. Um, creation yeah. is by the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. All three are active in creation. They played a role, no doubt, yeah. Creation originates out of the Father, but it is always, nearly always, yeah. um, talked, as, talked of as being through the Son, as I pointed out in John 1.3. Um, Colossians 1, 16 and 17 also talks about creation being through the sun. So um, yeah. uh, I don't really think it's terribly relevant to the Holy Spirit. Um, no, no, yeah, no, and that's yeah. what I was just trying to say. Yeah, we're, we're kind of straying off topic here. Yeah, um, I don't think yeah. it's that relevant, to be honest but with it's you. Just, that it's just saying that we're just seeing the role here that Holy Spirit came provided in creation. That's, that's what we're reading in that itself. Right. I would agree the Holy Spirit is active together with the Father and the Son in, in the creation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you see the scriptures in its entirety, that's absolutely true. Yeah. That's, 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 that's. Right. Uh, 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. You have to say that verse again, sorry. 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1, right. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 is the next verse mentioned in this. Well, that verse is just talking about the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inspired the um, um, in the writing of the Bible. Mm. Knowing this first, yeah. that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So um, what we have in, in the Bible would be um, books that are inspired by people uh, people who were inspired by by God and the books would give a revelation of the Messiah Jesus Christ um, But it's it this verse is often misapplied by certain TV preachers to say ah, I'm brother Billy Bob Joe I, fr I fly around the world on a private jet and you've got to pay me money uh, Because God's gonna bless you if you pay me money or, or so on and so on and okay. They would claim that they have revelation for today uh, and that's definitely not what this verse is saying. It's not saying that in the year 2021, there are men flying around the world in private jets who get direct revelation from God. He's talking about, he's talking about the, um, the origin of the scriptures. Right, yeah, yeah. And that's how I would say it as well. And yeah. then that, what about that phrase at the end, that they were moved? Yeah. Well, they, again, the, we're looking at this in the context of what are the teachers about the Holy Spirit, aren't we? Yeah, but the, the, Holy, the Holy Spirit inspired these men to write the scriptures and their revelation of Christ was given to them. Um, yeah, some of them... The revelation. It was a revelation. <laughs> yeah, their, their revelation of, of Christ was simply given to them as they were moved or influenced by the Holy Spirit. That's that's all the text is saying. I don't think it's very significant. To be honest with you. No, no, but it's just... But again, this is part of... All verses that refer to the Holy Spirit are significant for our discussion we're trying to build up this picture mm. of what it is, how it's used, what setting it's used. And all together, we start getting the picture of, what, of how it's used in the Bible, aren't we? Well, I don't think that verse is terribly relevant. It doesn't say who or what the Holy Spirit is. It's talking about what the Holy Spirit does. But there right. are... But if I, if I yeah. told you what I do, that helps explain who I am. Right, but there are clear verses in the Bible that tell us very clearly who the Holy Spirit actually is. Not what the okay. Holy Spirit is, but who the Holy Spirit is. When he speaks, he can speak and say, I and me. Now, when you say I and me in your conversation, you're recognizing your own existence, which is technically, technically called self-cognizance. Or is it the Bible personifying something? No. No, well, well, we would have to actually look at the verses. There's, there's only. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so shall we look at one? Yeah. Okay. Acts thirteen one. Acts thirteen one. Did you yeah. say? Sorry, Acts thirteen two. I beg your pardon. <coughs> um. It doesn't say the Father spoke through the Holy Spirit, or it doesn't say Jehovah spoke through the Holy Spirit. It says the Holy Spirit said. So this is the Holy Spirit speaking. Acts 13.2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. The Holy Spirit uses the pronouns me 
and I, which means he recognizes his own existence. Now, something that is impersonal, like electricity or a rock or a stone, cannot speak and say me and I. You can't have a conversation with a rock and the rock says, hello, I'm feeling very well today. Look at me. I'm basking here in the sun. Rocks can't s rocks cannot speak and they cannot say me and I because they do not have self-cognizance when they speak. They cannot speak and say me and I by, by the use of which you are recognizing your own existence as a personal being. Okay, yeah, I'm just making a note of that. Um, um, you, you've had the chance, you see, with the verses that we looked at, because yeah. you've already read them in advance, you've already yeah. had the chance to oh, have yeah. a, a good think about those in advance yeah. before ahead of our discussion. So I haven't jumped. Well, you so can... Let me just jot that down. You can, I've jotted that down for study. I'll just... You can, cross. you can copy these down. There's four or maybe five five sections. Um, you can copy them down and get back to me. That's, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. No problem. Go for it then. Um, the second one is self-will. Something that is impersonal, like a rock, a stone, electricity, or the wind cannot have self-will, right? Okay. But in verse 4, Acts 13, 4, the Holy Spirit sends out the apostles, Paul and Barnabas. Okay, yeah. And in Acts 16, 6, the Holy Spirit forbids Paul from preaching in Asia. So that's self-will. Right, yeah. He has self-cognizance. Yeah. He recognizes his own existence when he says, me and I. He has self-will. The third point is he has intellect, which something that is impersonal can't. We read of the mind of the Spirit in Romans 8.27. So if the Holy Spirit has a mind, he must be personal. He can't be an impersonal it, like a rock or a stone, a pile of mud or electricity, because electricity doesn't possess a mind, nor does a rock or a pile of mud. Yeah. And someone's trying to phone me. Sorry. I'm trying to cancel this call. Are you there still? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Sorry about this. Uh, I'm trying to press the red button. I'm not very good with phones. Right. Um, uh, what kind of phone do you have? Out oh, of interest. Samson. Is it, um, is it a uh, smartphone? So can you receive, like, pictures? Can I receive what? Like pictures, or like the file, or like a document, if I ever wanted to. Um, I can. I'm very reluctant to receive them. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, no in the past, I've just been spammed by people sending me, you know, stuff all the time, and I, I just oh, yeah. delete it unread. Yeah. I just I, delete those contacts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you just have um, block them, can't you? Which you right. <laughs> yes. Um, I prefer to speak on the phone or speak face yeah. to face. Um, okay. It wouldn't be fair if I kept sending you every every three or four hours more stuff for you to oh, read. No. I wasn't planning on that. Sure, I was sure. Just yeah, don't worry. But that's happened to me in the past, and I just have okay. a general okay. rule: if you've got anything yeah. of value to me, you then tell it to my somewhere. tell it tell it to me to my face, or tell it to me over the phone. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, read endless books and literature and whatever. The, the worst I ever met was a Seventh-day seventh, seventh Adventist. He just did not stop giving me books to read. Any question you asked him? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, um, the last one would be emotion. The Holy Spirit can love, Romans 15, 30. And the Holy Spirit can be grieved, Isaiah 63, 10. Yeah, well-known one. You can insult the Holy Spirit in Hebrews 10, 29. And of course, you can blaspheme the Holy Spirit in Mark 3, 28, 29. So you cannot be loved. Something that is impersonal, like electricity or the wind, cannot love. But the Holy Spirit loves, Romans 15, 30. How can you grieve the Holy Spirit, insult the Holy Spirit, and blaspheme the Holy Spirit if the Holy Spirit is an, an impersonal it, like a rock? You can't insult a rock. You can't insult or blaspheme electricity. 
So okay. those would be the four aspects of personality. I guess there's one more very briefly. I think the Bible says very clearly the Holy Spirit is God. It doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is God the Father. Okay, I'm not making that point. Um, Acts 5, 3 and 4, very briefly, Ananias lied to the Holy Spirit in Acts 5, chapter 5, verse 3. But in Acts 5, 4, you have not lied to men, but to God. So, Acts 5, 3, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? Whilst it remained, was it not your own? After it was sold, was it not in your control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. So there's an interchange between lying to the Holy Spirit in Acts 5.3 and lying to God in Acts 5.4, to which I would conclude the Holy Spirit is God. Yeah, so without straying, it's the one area that I knew would, would be, um, wouldn't get anywhere um, initially, which is um, Trinity teaching. Um, and I knew having that discussion straight off the bat wouldn't be productive. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, we don't have to discuss that. To have a framework and understanding of some other bits first when it comes to our view of things before kind of getting into that topic. And by okay. just focusing on the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, sure. Going straight into this, this is kind of straying into that territory indirectly. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm just making the point that if the Holy Spirit is God, he cannot be impersonal because God is not impersonal. God. Yeah, exactly. Which is then yeah. now we're going to the Trinity. Sure. But, but, but um, we'll, I won't say any more. I'll, I'll leave it at that because I'll, I'll listen now because you, I've said a lot. And um, thank you for letting me get my um, understanding across. I do, do appreciate that. It, is it Tom or Carl? Because I've had various. Carl. Carl. Carl, thank, thank you, Carl. So I'll listen to you now, yeah, Carl. Tom, you've spoken to before, is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Um, oh, out of curiosity, you know when you said you said you went up to somebody in Windsor once. Yes. Because Windsor was right next to the flower. So, so you, you don't by any chance remember any of the people you spoke to there? That would be funny if I knew. Them. No, I, I, I don't. Um, I don't remember the name, yeah, but I do hard. remember. Um, I do remember that the gentleman was an elder at the Windsor congregation and um, I asked him if, if the Crown, that's the head of the British government, was part of a satanic yeah. organisation and he said yes and I was a bit shocked. I remember, that's why I remember you, that's why I remember you mentioning Windsor, that was all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, fair enough. No worries. And what I, I, I've actually... I've got to go and prepare for a meeting now, because yep. I've got one at half past eleven. Yeah. Um, yes, we can pencil in... Um, I don't have my diary with me at the moment, so it's best to text me when yeah, you want to I, speak I, again. I'm, I'm just, sorry. Keep Wednesday in mind. Wednesday afternoons are generally fairly flexible. Um, so, if you think Wednesday afternoon, once you get home and you see your diary, let me know Wednesday afternoons, what time will suit you. Well, if you just text me a time... Um, I can always take uh, that we'll fix on that time and I'll text you back yeah. if that's not convenient. Yeah. No problem. Okay, Carl. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. All right. I will speak to you Wednesday. Okay, Carl. Bye-bye. 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 I can entirely agree with that. That is, that is absolutely still the, the view that we have. In fact, that was part of our Bible study this morning. Wow. So, you would say that Britain and America are Satan's organisation? They're part of it. They are part of that same world um, under the control of Satan that Daniel 2.44 describes as needing to be crushed and put an end to by the kingdom of God. Um, would that include the crown? Do you think the crown is a part of this Satan's organisation? I mean. It's earlier it is the headpiece of that uh, political organization. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at paragraph 12 
page 32 of what does the Bible really teach? In fact, Jesus specifically re referred to Satan as the ruler of this world. So you're saying that President Putin in Russia and Her Majesty the Queen here in the UK rule by either the um, authority of the devil or by the influence of the devil. I, I mean, I go back to page 31, quote, paragraph 11, quote, Jesus never doubted that Satan is the ruler of this world. Yes, that's right. That is actually right, because you see, the thing is, Jesus would not allow the Jews to make him the king, because he said, my kingdom is no part of this world. His, king, his kingdom is a heavenly government, and that heavenly government is going to solve all mankind's problems. And there you've got Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4, which tell you of the, the wonderful things that will occur. Some governments are more fair-minded than others. Right. Can we dialogue about that? The British government mm -hmm. has given you charity status. Charity status. That's right. You're on the Charity Commission website. Um, yeah. Um, so you've got charity status from the British government, which is very strange. No, because I'm, you, I'm you, not disputing that. Um, you know, there are some fair-minded governments on earth. Some are better than others. We have yeah. dictatorial governments. We have all kinds of. You know. We have governments that are moving to the right, the extreme right wing. We've seen it all over the world, and some are more liberal-minded. But um, basically, they're all under the umbrella of satanic rulership. Right, and that, to the you, government. would also include, Jim, the British government and the British crown. Is that right? Yes, definitely, yeah. Including the British yeah. crown, even though the British crown has given you charity stations and tax breaks in the UK, you still believe the crown is... And explain that to me. 